Hi, I'm Stacey and I'm a hardware design engineer and I'm back with more of HDL bits problems. So I've got my coffee and I've got my PC and we're going to just go through some of these and I'm going to try and be less rambly and try and be more prepared. I have taken notes and I have pre-written everything. So I'm also going to try and break it down more into logical sections and I'm going to do timestamps and all of that good stuff. So let's get into it. I'm going to pick up where I left off and I've got the wire declaration problem here on my PC and we can see that it's a little bit of a combinatorial logic type problem where we have a couple of AND and OR gates and they're driving two outputs. So the actual combinatorial logic doesn't really matter here, you know, it, it can be anything, but I'm going to go through a couple of things. So the first point that I would like to make is that you can't always drive an output from another output. So I could say out is driven by my combinatorial logic, and then I could say out underscore in is driven by not out, but that's not going to work in every case. I think that in Verilog it will let you get away with this, but generally the practice is not to drive an output signal with another output signal. And this is where beginners mess up. What I also don't want to do is I don't want to duplicate this logic. If I want to change the combinatorial logic, maybe I want to add an extra variable or I want to adjust it in some way, now I have to do it in two places and that's more error prone. My recommendation is to have an intermediate signal. So this is my final solution for the problem. I will create an intermediate signal out underscore i and I will use that signal to drive the outputs and that signal is driven by our combinatorial logic. And what's nice about that is then the combinatorial logic is just in one place that we can change and adjust and we don't have to worry about it being in multiple places. The underscore i notation is one that I've seen extremely commonly where the underscore i stands for internal or an internal signal that is used to drive an output. I'd like to talk about how this works out in like a practice in like a professional setting. Even though these examples have like ands and ors and a being anded with b and in real life I don't code like this. I wanted to give you an example of a case where I would be using this kind of combinatorial logic because this isn't really representative of something that we see in real life. So I've got an example here of how this works out in practice. I usually would use this to enable a feature or a data source in the FPGA. So these local params are constants, they're parameters. Usually they would be on the top level somewhere, but I've just included them in this example here and either data source A is enabled or data source B is enabled. In this case, we have an output bus that are called C, which is still a pretty bad naming convention. I would actually name it something realistic. And depending on which one is high, we can drive the output C with either the A bus or the B bus. And then I've also included here what the bus would look like. So this is the data bus and it is muxed between the A enable and the B enable. So if data source A is enabled, then the A data will be used to drive the Z bus. And if the B is enabled, then the B data will be used to drive the B bus. Well, that's that for this one. Hi. So it's like three days later and I didn't even realize that I didn't film an outro. So thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> I must remember, I'm such a noob. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. There's a Google Forms link in the description if you want to. Let me know what I should make next. And I'll see you around. Bye.